Joining us now, two men with differing perspectives. Vinny DeMarco is with the group Marylanders to Prevent Gun Violence. Dan Bongino is a former Secret Service agent. You may recall he was the Republican Party standard bearer in last year's U.S. Senate race. Welcome to you both. Thanks very much for coming Thanks, in. Bruce. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Dan Bongino, let me begin with you. You tweeted something yesterday online, and I want to share it with the viewers. Tune in tomorrow to News 8 News Talk, which is, of course, our mm -hmm. Twitter handle. At 10 a.m., I will be live with Bruce DePoit debating our evaporating civil liberties. Is anything in the area of gun control, what people like Vinny would, I think, fair, call gun control, is all of it an improper erosion of our civil liberties? Of course. I mean, Vinny can call it whatever he likes, and anyone can call it gun control, but there's no such thing as gun control. It's a common debating tactic known as the utopian fallacy, where you compare this world to a world that doesn't exist. Where are guns controlled? In Brazil, where the gun control laws are really strict and people die every day by guns? So what you're not taught, you're, there is no gun control. I, the Obama administration does this beautifully. They talk about you know, taxes on the rich as a means of economic control to take more money from middle class Americans, which is what eventually happened. They talk about health care initiatives that eventually turn your health care over to a bureaucrat. There's no other way to describe some of the boards they set up. Then they talk about gun control, which is really an erosion of your right to self-protection which is put in the, in the hands of, of government agencies and government agents that can tell you when and when you cannot protect yourself. Because remember, criminals don't care, Bruce, about your laws. They don't care at all. So as to that classic example that's used frequently, and I think understandably, uh, standing up in a crowded movie theater and yelling fire when there's no fire, or let's make it a little less emotional. Let's say I want to stand up in the middle of a movie theater and scream. Uh, crazy talk because it's because the First Amendment guarantees me the right to free speech. Are you okay with rules that say you may not do certain things in the free speech area, even though we all know what's on paper on the in the Constitution? Right, but that's a ridiculous example because there are sanctions. How afterwards. is but, it ridiculous? Well, I'm going to tell you if you let me respond. Uh, when you walk into the movie theater, does someone say to you, "What are you going to say? Are you going to yell when you get in there?" No. There's a sanction afterwards. If you get up and say fire, you can be arrested for for public, for uh, by, you know, for uh, uh, causing chaos. Uh, and if I want to read from the Bible out loud in a loud voice, uh, where? In the movie theater? Uh, that's not illegal. They may ask you to leave the movie theater. The problem is you're talking about post-action, not preemptive. Things. There are already regulations on, on gun. Uh, well, well, you know, what we're about is gun violence prevention. Uh, and thanks for having me on the show. I'm honored to be here with Dan. Um, President Obama and Governor O'Malley have proposed reasonable measures that will save lives, that are fully consistent with the Second Amendment right, right to bear arms, don't take away anybody's guns, and really just save lives. At the federal level, President Obama wants to ban assault weapons and high-capacity gun magazines that no one should have outside the military. The American people agree with that. And he wants to have universal background checks so that everywhere you go, a gun show, a private sale, you have to go through a background check. It makes sense. In Maryland, Governor O'Malley is also proposing to ban assault weapons and high-capacity gun magazines like were used in the horrible shooting in Newtown and Aurora and shot Gabby Giffords in Tucson. But he also wants to propose licensing handgun purchasers. And this is a proposal which makes so much sense. States in America that have fingerprint-based licensing of handgun purchasers have dramatically fewer gun deaths dramatically lower gun death rates simply because when you have that kind of provision you don't lie when you go to a background check because you're fingerprinted and you don't buy guns for criminals. So how do you square some of the restrictions that we have or are being contemplated with the protections that are in, clearly they're, in They're fully the consistent. Con Judge Scalia's decision in the Heller decision that establishes the right to bear arms for protect yourself in your home specifically said states have the right to regulate uh, firearms in order to protect the public safety. And we believe all these laws, in fact, the Attorney General of Maryland, Doug Gansler, ruled that Governor O'Malley's um, pro uh, provision 
proposal is fully consistent with the Second Amendment, and I want to emphasize this. Gun owners need not fear that this is going to turn into a gun ban because the Supreme Court said we can't do that. It is a reasonable measure. 80% of Americans, of Marylanders, including 64% of Republicans, support this fingerprint-based licensing. The legislature should enact it. Reasonable? Uh, no. If Vinny uses a common tactic, again, we're going to save lives. You know, Vinny can't guarantee me anything, I assure you. The only thing Vinny can guarantee me is that criminals don't care about what Vinny says about gun laws. Now, law-abiding citizens, which is what uh, Vinny, the law he's supporting, which is 281, SB 281 in Maryland, that will affect law-abiding gun owners. And there is an assault weapons ban written in there. That is absolutely not accurate. There is a long list of weapons yes. that, by the way, I don't know, Vinny, have you ever been on the street and used weapons, fired weapons? I was a police officer in the Secret Service aid. Do you realize that a lot of these weapons are just banned because they're really scary looking? They're not based on any ballistic capability of the actual round. There is no science in this at all. Do you take issue with the phrase it. assault weapon? That uh, well, does Vinny have a weapon that's not designed to assault? Well, well, well let, 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 me, let me just say this. This measure will save lives, and we know that because states that have fingerprint-based licensing have dramatically fewer gun deaths because it prevents someone who doesn't have a criminal background from buying a gun for a criminal called a straw purchase. That's why chiefs of police, state's attorneys have come to the legislature and urged, strongly urged that this be enacted. And no one should be able to shoot more than 10 rounds at one time. The Washington Post today had a great editorial about how these high capacity gun magazines are why so many people get shot in these horrible tragedies. Let me pick up on that. President Obama has said broadly, we shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. So just because we can't wave a wand and do away with all loss of innocent life. From his perspective, that doesn't mean we shouldn't act where we can. And Chief Lanier, who is here every month, says basically what Vinny just said, that if we restrict the magazines, then when you have someone who's deranged or evil and they're going to spray the town square with whatever weapon they have, they, they're going to have to stop and reload at some point and there's an opportunity to, re are? to reduce. Are you sure? So they're going to use a 10-round magazine, not the hundreds of millions of 30-round magazines that are out there. You know who's going to use the 10-round magazine? The good guy who abides by the law. This is absurd. You, you guys talk about this as if criminals actually care what you think. I was on the street for 17 years. Vinny points out selectively correlational data he knows I could point out as well. Brazil has the toughest gun control laws in the world. They also have assassinations on the street. Have you ever seen someone shot? Yeah, I have. We're talking These about are, the United States. No, We're well, talking about comparing to the United States. You're cherry picking data. No, because uh -huh. correlation does not equal causation. If you take a statistics course, you realize that. Just because data are core, you know, people get a lot more colds in the winter. It's not because it's, it's cold. State trooper you know from New Jersey. State support. trooper from New Jersey says that in New Jersey, because they have this fingerprint licensing scheme, they don't have straw purchases. He, he can definitively they, say they, that. They don't have straw purchases. It's causal and, data. And and in New York City, where they have this kind of law, 85% yeah, of the no guns. Shot, can I finish? 85%. 85%. I'm going to finish. 85% of the guns used in crime come from out of state. You know why? In New York, they have much lower gun death rate than in Maryland, and the guns that are killed there come from Maryland and other states that don't have this licensing Vinny, you system. You know why? Because in Arizona, where you could buy a gun, people also have open concealed carry. They have a much they higher don't use gun the death guns rate there because the criminals don't want to be shot. They have a much higher gun death rate in You're Arizona right. New than York Maryland. City and Baltimore have no yes, gun deaths. They have much higher higher in Arizona than New York Why and Maryland. Why do you think the chiefs are on board with much Because of they're this? political appointees. I was in law enforcement. These folks, Vinny cannot answer this. Correlation causation. Well, well, Vinny, I'm you, telling you what it does. It they, reduces strong purchases. I need to break in about 90 seconds, and I'm curious to, yeah. get, to, to have you finish the sentence that you began yeah. there. Um, for the chiefs to come out and, and embrace much of what right. the gun control community, let's just call it, uh, is advocating. You've been in the government, sure. And I'm curious to get your thoughts on why you think they're they're pretty solid on a lot of this. They stuff. are strict political appointees. When I was with the New York City Police Department, past a certain level, I think it was captain at the time. The rest are political appointees, meaning they serve at the discretion of the mayor of New York City. Uh, when I was with the Secret Service, there are political appointees at work as well, SES level appointees, senior executive service. Do you think they're not going to toe the line of the administration? I, I, I mean, I, I don't ridiculous. think it's fair for you to impugn the integrity of Chief uh, Just of Vinnie, Baltimore County. Police Chief, Baltimore County Police Chief, Baltimore County Police Chief Jim Johnson. When did I he comes Jim here, Johnson or did you? When, uh, when Jim Johnson comes to testify in favor of this legislation, he's testifying because he believes it will protect his officers and protect the people of Baltimore County and the people of Maryland. That's why he's doing it. I have to go to break in 30 yeah. seconds. As a former law enforcement person, as a Secret Service person pr prior, uh, would you not 
support a ban on the so-called cop killer bullets, or are they mislabeled? Which, well, you're talking about hollow point rounds? Well, what makes them any more dangerous than full metal jacket rounds? I mean, again, this is, this is not based on science. It's but cop, who's going to say no to cop killer bullets? That's, what are you, are you talking about, the grain? Are you talking about the jacket? The, the answer is you probably don't know, and either does the person who put the label cop killer bullets on. Who is going to say no to that, Bruce? We'll take a break here. Most of you will see more of our conversation with Dan Bongino and Vinnie DeMarco after the break. Continuing our conversation here on News Talk with Vinnie DeMarco. He's with Marylanders to Prevent Gun Violence. Uh, Dan Bongino was the Republican Senate candidate in Maryland last year. He's a former Secret Service agent. Our topic this time is the gun debate. Um, I have here a transcript from uh, Friday's uh, Kojo and Amdi show on WAMU Radio, and I want to read to you and the folks at home a brief a few words from what uh, Attorney General Doug Gansler of your state, Maryland, said on this issue just 72 hours ago. He said, I think most people on the gun issue believe uh, that if you want, he's talking about the middle ground that he believes exists, even though this is a polarizing issue. He says, I think most people on the gun issue believe that if you want to have a handgun in your home to protect yourself and your family from an intruder, you should be able to do that as long as, along with shotguns and rifles if you're a hunter, but those same people, most people, don't think you should be able to walk down Wisconsin Avenue loaded up with AK-47s and bazookas. So there's really a middle ground, and some of the debate is centered on that middle ground. He's absolutely right, and th that's why he tells Testify strongly in favor of the governor's proposal, and he points out that it is fully constitutional. It respects the right to bear arms, and under the decision by Justice Scalia in the Heller case, it allows states to do things like banning assault weapons and high-capacity gun magazines and licensed handgun purchasers. What do you think of the Attorney General's comment about bazookas and AK-47s on Wisconsin Avenue? It's the most, it's, Doug Gansel's running for governor. That's the most ridiculous statement. Who's arguing for that, Bruce? I mean, do you know a common but sense person that's come out in the media? Well, no, seriously, who said, I want to carry a bazooka? But if your view uh, is the Second uh, Amendment is, is open-ended and any restriction that's is... That's not what I it, said. That's not what but I said. I'm, I'm trying are, to phrase it in those terms. There are already laws on the books to try to keep guns out of the hands of criminals. How well are they working? Go ask the citizens of Baltimore City and Chicago where it's a shooting gallery. The answer is they aren't. So if the laws aren't working now, now, I ask you this, where are these angels in government that you put so much of your faith in that are going to institute new laws that are all of a sudden going to work? So if, so if lawbreakers are outside the realm of doing what we as a society would have them do, why do you think pilot the, the, old, the, new laws on top of old would have the fact success? is the laws that we have in place to regulate gun violence are working. We just need to make them better. The Brady Law, enacted in 1993, which the gun lobby, I don't know why, but they opposed it, requiring background checks at gun dealers, has stopped millions of criminals from getting guns. Because criminals would go into a gun store to buy a gun and just lie. But now there was a background check and a lot of them were stopped. Unfortunately, that law didn't apply to gun shows and private sales, so we have to extend that. It makes sense. Licensing handgun purchasers is something that five or six states do in America very well. It reduces straw purchases, dramatically reduces gun deaths. We should learn from them and get the same in Maryland. Should mental illness, should treatment and diagnosis of mental illness, and perhaps some look at vi video games and movies, be part of a broad uh, approach to this issue? Well, the mental health part is part of the governor's package, and that's being debated right now. I mean, there, there are issues there. You don't want to deter people from getting treatment. But on the other hand, if someone has serious mental health issues, you don't want that person uh, to, to, to get a gun and be, be dangerous to society. The governor's bill does a good job of striking a balance there. And, and that has, the bill has three sections, banning assault weapons, high capacity gun magazines, licensing of purchasers, and, and reducing the access of guns that people shouldn't have because of mental health issues. I think the bill does a very good job. Do you think we could be doing more to prevent uh, convicted felons, those who have, through their behavior, demonstrated they, 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 that going forward they shouldn't be able to own firearms? How do we keep them from getting weapons at, at gun shows and through private sales? Well, there is no gun show loophole, and Vinny's not telling you the truth. There are There is a exemption for private sales. Most sales at gun shows, through regulated dealers, by law, there has to be a NICS background check. So that's actually not true. The gun show loophole is another rhetorical device to get you to believe that people can go to a gun show, buy from a licensed dealer without a background check. It's not right. Um, secondly, do you guys believe in liberty or not? I mean, how many lists do you want to be on? The the government now has to license me, a law-abiding citizen, 
of the United States of America who just wants to protect my family. I really don't have any personal interest in guns, Bruce. Why do I, what am I, a sex offender? Why do I have to be on your list? What do you know that I don't know as a bureaucrat? I'm not going on your list. I'm not interested in your list, and I'm not interested in your opinion on how I should protect myself and my two daughters. I'm well, not. Well, Dan is right that Maryland doesn't have a gun show loophole. We close that in Maryland, and, several, and many states have, but many other states have not. That's why 40% of gun sales in America don't have a background check. That's either not they, go, they do, either go through a gun show or a private sale. Where we do you need get to, that number from? We, it, 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 it's, it's from Mayors Against Illegal Guns. That's and been it's, debunked. It, no, it has over not. And, let, let, let me that's, just say you know this that's very not true. No, you know as well as I do, many states, that's not true. many states do not have requirement of background checks at, at gun shows. It, no, that's not the, right. The Brady Law does not require it and many states don't every state should but let me just say this about 10 seconds about this there are ways that criminals now get guns which we can close with licensing to per, uh, gun, uh, handgun purchasers that's why these laws work in new jersey and new york to be continued uh, dan bongino vinnie demarco thank you very much thank for your you time much. back with a program note right after this